Welcome to the press conference for the SEC Tournament Champion South Carolina Gamecocks. We're joined by Head Coach Dawn Staley, Student Athletes Tahina Pow Pow and Malaysia Full Wiley. We'll begin with questions for the Student Athletes. Please raise your hand, we'll bring a microphone to you. Here in the, front, in the second row. Yep, Malaysia, obviously local product. You've wanted to be in a moment like this for South Carolina ever since you were a kid. To come up big like that, just how special was this moment for you? You know, it meant a lot to me. Uh, considering the fact that I'm only a freshman, so it's my first time around, and this is a great first experience for me and my team and the other freshmen, Tessa Johnson and the newcomers, Pow Pow. I'm just blessed to be here and excited. Front row. We'll go here and then there. Uh, for either of you guys, a uh, hectic moment there in the end. How do you maintain your composure, and what's your uh, conversation like in the huddle before you go back out to end the game? The main point was just we got to finish it out on um, these last two minutes. We just got to finish it out, be composed. It's, all, it's a mental thing, and we got to stick together. And at the end of the game, we just got to you know, be there for each other and finish with um, high heads, high heads up. Right here. Mylaja, you were right in the middle of that. I guess can you just kind of take us through what, you ha what happened there, at least what, or at least what you saw? I'm not sure. Alan, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. Um, well, I mean, what you saw were two teams, um, highly competitive teams, um, try to win a net, try to win a, a conference championship, and they did not handle it well. Our players didn't, their players didn't, and it escalated. And I, you know, I, I want to thank the officials and everybody that jumped in and just kind of um, calmed the situation down, and then. The penalties were um, what they were. Like they were well within the rules of ejecting the players that that left the bench, um, even if they just stepped over the the line of the bench. You can't. You have to sit there and keep your composure. Um, but I, I'm going to say this: uh, Fly J came to me after the game, right after the game, and she just apologized and said she's not that type of player. And I really appreciate that. It's just something that somebody won't ever hear if I didn't say anything. And she's not. She's a really good person. Um, things just got escalated. Um, I'll take responsibility for what happened from our side of it, um, which is we don't, you know, we, we we talk about these things as a, you know, as a as a team, and we we try to as much as possible. Um, express to them how not to react in, in those type of situations. Um, but real time is real time. And I know that, you know, anybody, Camilla, as well as the other four or five players that were ejected, I know if they had a chance to do it all over again, they would do it differently. But now we have that. I just don't want um, the people who are tuning in to women's basketball see that and think, you know, that is our game because it isn't. Our game is a really beautiful thing. Um, and to be quite honest, this is this is a part of it now. So we have to fix it, and we have to move on. We'll continue with questions for the student athletes. We'll go to the back first. This is for both athletes. So on a positive note, you two are newcomers this year. How does it feel to have your SEC regular season championship and now your SEC tournament championship rings? Um, it hasn't sunk in just yet. Um, today's uh, game, but just being able to be called champions is just a great feeling. It's a great blessing and a great opportunity just to keep the, the journey going and just really blessed to be here and very grateful for our team, the program, and just everyone that's been supporting us and um, has been living on us. Over here on the left, Rick. Malaysia, do you see uh, one of your important roles for this team is when things are going a little stagnant, there's a lack of energy to come in and provide that energy and that burst that the, your teammates need? Um, my role on this team is just go out there and be who I am. So when I get on the court, I just feel like I just go out there and do whatever's asked from the coach. Right here in the front. Well, ladies, you guys have signed a lot of autographs and taken a lot of selfies on a court throughout this season, but to do it here and to see those fans stick around, what did that mean? Well, Alicia, I think you stopped at every single person along that one sideline. What was that moment like? What were the fans telling you in this moment when so much emotion around you guys? 
Um, they were just telling us how far they traveled to see this game, how much they appreciate us, and how much they're happy for us. So I'm just appreciative to have great fans like we do. They come, they stick with us through thick and thin. It's just I just feel grateful to just be in a predicament in a team like this. It's a blessing. Right, second row here. Uh, for Malaysia, after the quarterfinal, you said that you were really nervous, but you said tomorrow it's not going to be that way. And obviously you had a great semifinal and even better championship. Can you just describe your mentality going into these last two games that had you completely locked in? Um, I feel like basketball is a confidence. That's the key to basketball. I feel like my confidence is out the roof when I step on the court. I feel like nobody can guard me, check me. So I just got it's a really a mind thing, and I just told myself that I have to lock in and play better. Stay in the second row. Uh, Pal, you got this team was on the biggest stage. You guys <laughs> faced adversity in each game in different ways. Describe how closer this experience has brought this group uh, heading into a run where you guys will have to go 6-0 and to cut down the nets. Yeah, no, this is a first experience for everyone. Um, as I said before, the emotions hasn't sunk in yet. And I don't know when that's going to sink in. But um, it definitely brought us closer together. Um, you know, their family, I love them so much. We just love each other very, very much. We're just so genuine with each other. We trust each other. We support each other in every aspect. And it's just, it's going to help us in the long run because we, we felt what it felt like yesterday. We we're that close game. Like, we didn't want to feel like that ever again. But this feeling, I think everyone, everyone wants to feel this feeling again. So we just got to get back in the lab and uh, get back to work and just keep doing what we're doing. Right, front row, Cora. Tahina, I wanted to ask you about Myleja saying she was going to be better the next two games. Just the way she impacted the next two games, what did you think of her poise, her confidence, and just the way that she got better with each game? Man, that's how she is. Um, she's a superstar. She's a hooper. She's a baller. She's always going to come game ready. Um, I'm super proud of her performance today. Um, she, came, she stepped up really big for us, and I'm just really proud, for her, proud of her. She trusted the process. Um, she's still trusting it. She's going to ride her journey, and I'm just super proud of how she – um, was so composed today, and her confidence was out the roof, as she said. And when you got a player like Lay, she's just, you just got to let her go, be who she is, and just let her ride the wave. And um, I'm just super proud. Couldn't, couldn't say any much. <laughs> Front row. For either of you, what is that celebration like at the end of the game when you're missing half your team? <laughs> Good um, question. It was heartbreaking. You know, we couldn't have done it without them. I mean, we're a team for a reason. We're a family, and it was it was really hard for us. Um, just a lot of emotions, and we really wanted them to celebrate with us. But we went back in the locker room, and you know, we did our little celebrations together. But it was really heartbreaking. But you know, we're a team. We're gonna get. We're gonna bounce back from that and um, learn from our mistakes. We'll take a couple more for the student athletes. Second row, Pete. Tahina, this was another game where they came back at you. Um, you know, they cut it to one. I think it was up to 13. They cut it to one there. What did you guys do to dig in and, and kind of get this victory? We just told each other we got to lock in and just get a stop. Once you get a stop, you got to get a bucket, and we just got to keep doing that. You know, the game is a – basketball is a game of runs, so they had their little run, and then we had our, our run, and we ended up on top. So we just got to keep being who we are. Take one more here in the front. Malaysia, 10 points in that third quarter, and I don't think you missed a shot in that quarter. Um, at what point do you realize that you're kind of in the zone and you can kind of take over a game like that when it is starting to get pretty tight? Um, I really just be out there hooping, really. Honestly, I just, I just be hooping. I feel like my team, they do a great job with giving me the ball when I'm open or getting me open, so I'm just thankful and blessed to have great teammates like I do. Ladies, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> we'll now take questions for Coach Staley. It's right here in the front. Coach, some high highs and some low lows for Camilla this weekend. Did you get a chance to talk with her during the review or after the game about what she should take away from this experience overall? I, I haven't. I haven't been back. I haven't been to the locker room yet. Uh, but I mean, Camilla understands. She she really understands. I think if you if you talk to Camilla about things, she probably says she let her emotions get the best of her, um, and she's got to handle them better. She's got to she's got to be better. She's that important to our team, that important to the you know to the state of women's basketball. Camilla's a star, and we just really can't have her in a position where she's in the locker room 
um, for anything other than have time in the end of the basketball games. In the back? Or second row first, and we'll go to the back. It, Coach, obviously, you know, we've talked about Full Wally multiple points during this season. She's had huge moments all year long, but this one may kind of take the cake a bit. What's it like for you to see her out there and be hooping, as she's saying? Um, I mean, her maturation process has been great. You know, like, um, she's, a, she's a learner. I know she just said she's out there hooping, but she's out there hooping and learning and, and, and grasping what it takes to play at a high level all the time. Like all the time, like she had it going on today. Like you know, she was able to score. She was able to um, find teammates. Um, I think just her presence, her speed, her ability to create her own shot was needed today, um, like no other. Back row. Don, today's game was a game between the, the past two national champions. Uh, I know there's still a lot of games to be played in March Madness, but do you feel like this is the, the best two teams in the country and you could meet again in the, the Final Four in, in the championship game? Um, I, don't, I don't know if we're the best team in the country. Um, I know there's a ranking that says we're number one, um, but – I, I think that's subjective. Um, LSU is really good. Like, for them to be where they are, you know, having um, lost a couple of players along the way and still staying where they stand. And while I'm at it, I, I, I really hope that um, 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 last year Poe is okay. I, I know she uh, was back at the hotel. Um, I hope she gets healthy quickly um, because she makes them better um, to, to have who they have. Um, Angel playing the way she plays, Anissa playing the way that she's playing. I think Flage is has much improved. They would, if there was a, you know, a most improved, I would certainly give Flage uh, my vote. Um, her ability to play on both sides of the basketball. You know, Michaela Williams is um, our, our rookie of the year in this league and can take over basketball games. Um, Haley Van Lift is playing her best basketball for LSU right now. So um, I do think they have the experience and the talent uh, to be considered um, one of the best teams in our country, in the country. Right. We'll go here in the middle. <clears throat> Don, you've experienced this winning feeling so often, but can you take us through what you're feeling just today after yeah. this win? Yeah, it's bittersweet. It really is. It's, it's you know, I, I, I want to be there for the players that were able to to end the game and celebrate with them, you know, but part of me was want, wanted to be in the locker room to, to celebrate with the players who weren't able to, to do that. Um, but we put ourselves in that position. We, we made decisions that, 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 that forced, forced our hand to be in that situation. So I'm hoping that it's the last of the last. Hope it's the biggest lesson that any of our, any of our teams have to experience. Front row on the right. Don, I've talked to you so many times about your fans, but today to be able to connect with them after a moment like this, and I don't know, was it uplifting and all when you talk about those conflicted feelings you were having, but to know that, that they're there and what they mean to you yeah. guys and vice versa. I mean, they were professing their love for you mm -hmm. and respect for you, and especially that apology that you made there on that court in the biggest moment. I'm, I'm always going to find time for our fans, always, always. Um, they've uh, they've created something truly special at South Carolina. Uh, for them to come, for, for them to travel, for them to come to our home games, um, anywhere we are, there's, there's always somebody in the stands um, cheering us on um, and welcoming us to, the, to town. Um, so I, there's always gonna be a special place in, in my heart for, for our fans and I will, I will, I will always take a picture. I will always sign an autograph. I might not be able to do all of them, but a, you know, a lot of them I'm, I'm going to do. And for time's sake, um, I'll get as many in as I can. Rick. <clears throat> Don, you've got some time now before your next game. What's going to be the plan, the process to get this team ready for the NCAA tournament, especially your players who are going through this for the first time? Yep, I mean rest, rest, a lot of rest. Like we'll we'll probably take uh, the next three or four days off from practice. Uh, spring break usually lands on this week, but it was on, I mean this the next week. But it, 
actually was this week. So they'll they'll have their days off from practice, but not from class. Um, and some of the stuff that uh, they'll have to do with um, our athletic trainer and our performance coach. No practice, though. Okay. Front row. After everything kind of happened, your team looked pretty comfortable over the last two minute stretch to close out the game. What did you tell them before everyone went back on the court to kind of refocus them on, on winning a tournament championship? Well, I mean, we, we had a lot of time to just kind of um, just de-escalate. Um, and, you know, before we knew exactly what was going to happen, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I knew Camilla was gone. I knew she was going to be uh, disqualified. Um, I did not know we were going to have two, like four other players disqualified because um, I, I was I was unaware that they left the bench. Um, so we just talked about strategy, like what we wanted to do, what kind of ball screen coverage um, that we wanted to have, and what type of offenses that we wanted to run um, to milk the clock a little bit. Um, you know, but just like LSU, they found themselves back into the basketball game. So we had to fight and claw to finish it. And I thought we did a great job um, making free throws at the end of the game and Breezy hitting a couple of big shots to, you know, to get us, give us a lead in which where we didn't have to panic. All right, second row. Don, you talked about, or you said multiple times how young this team is, but it was some of your youngest players, Tessa, in the, uh, the first game, then Malaysia today. What does it say that this young core could show up in the big spots, and, and how critical was it for the experience that they got here for the run that's uh, fast approaching? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super proud of our, our youngsters. Um, they Their experience is a, is a little bit different than when some of our experienced players were youngsters. Like, they have to play for us. Um, and you know, if you if you ask them if they saw themselves playing how they're playing today, like three months ago or four months ago before the season, I'm sure um, they would say no because their heads were spinning about um, the pace of play, about you know how we implement offenses and defenses and just the pace of you know what we need to learn. Um, it took it took them a while to actually acclimate to that. But now that they have it, and they put in a lot of work to get to where they are, like it just doesn't happen overnight. I'm sure they would would have wanted to happen overnight. It just doesn't. Like as much as we saw them um, perform the way they have in this tournament, there's been you know times where they didn't perform, and there'll probably be more times that they won't perform up to that level. So it's just learning how to maintain that that high level of play, and it, only experience will, will will teach them that. Take two or three more right here, front and left. <clears throat> Don, it's the second straight game in a row that you know is coming down to the final few minutes, and you know fighting off a, a massive comeback yesterday, and then fighting off a smaller one today. What have you kind of learned from your team here in these last forty-eight hours about how they fight off teams and, and how they close out a lot of these games? Uh, I mean, they're they're pretty poised. They they feel like um, they they're competitiveness goes to another level, you know, when, when the game gets close and they don't panic. Um, you know, I think a, a lot of it is just how close they are. They don't want to let each other down. They don't. They hold each other accountable. Like, this is probably the team that holds each other more accountable than any team that I've been around. And maybe that's the, that maybe that's the trick, um, is that some of the things that we're, we're addressing um, in a timeout, they've already addressed on the court. So they're already talking about what happened out there on the way um, back to the bench. So it's pretty cool to see the closeness of this group and this group really just getting each other. And they also will, will, will definitely encourage and they, they surely would, you know, have multiple conversations about something they did that deserves um, a highlight. Or, uh, or a pat on the back. They do that a lot as well. Front row, Cora. 
Uh, I know you just talked about their poise, but specifically today it was a super long review and you know only to have six players to finish the game. What do you feel like it said about your team that the players that you know were finishing the game did it even though it was tight and and they you know overcame that you know everything that happened in a, in a super long break? Um, I mean, they they are free like they play they play without pressure, and is the most amazing thing. Like you know even. Even I put pressure on them, you know. I put pressure on them um, probably at some point in each game. And they look at me, and the other ones that I'm talking to, well, aren't talking directly to, they're encouraging them. They are holding them accountable for it. Um, so it's, it's – they're resilient. You know, I don't – I'm happy for them. But I also know that – can't keep winning the close games at some point. You know, the law of averages say, I mean, you gotta you gotta build a lead. <laughs> you gotta keep a lead if you can get one. Take two more, start in the front. Uh, you mentioned the uniqueness of this group and the accountability a couple times. Was there a point over the summer, or maybe early in the year, where you kind of realize that this group had something specific like that that the other ones haven't? No, no, because I, I learn each day there is something that that makes me it's like, and, and they don't even know it's happening. I'm just listening. Um, it's conversations that they have in the locker room because they're loud. Um, it is, you know, if I watch them in practice and they're whispering to each other about what's, what's happening out there on the floor, well, that's what I, that's what I think they're talking about. Um, it's just really cool to see. And it's... You know, it's genuine. Like, it's, it's genuine. Like, you can have some teams in which, you know, they have cliques and they get along with this clique and they get it, and it could, it could lead to some dissension, you know. And, I mean, this team, they do have cliques, but they integrate. Like, like it's, it's the, the most beautiful, amazing thing um, that, this, that this team has, the chemistry that they have and they've created from the very beginning until now has been um, really refreshing to be around. All right, last one, Pete. Don, you've got to have some conflicting emotions about the way this unfolded in the sense that, like a parent, you may not be happy with one of your children did, but if they're standing up for their sibling, you know, you, part of you is really proud of that too. I mean, you talk about how close this team is. Yeah. You know, they showed they stood up for one another no matter what the situation was. That's got to be a, you know, it's got to be something to balance there. Yeah, there, there is. And, and, you know, a lot of people ask me to compare last year's team to this year's team. That, that would have never happened in last year's team. You know, because they would have they been so political about it. If, if that would have happened, then Aaliyah would have probably just been the referee and just kind of, no, don't do that. Like, um, and then you got this team that, that they're protectors, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's a bittersweet. Like you you want them to protect their their sisters at the same time, you want them to do it in a way in which you don't get penalized, um, and you you're not in a position to not be able to celebrate, um, which is something super hard to do, like super hard to do, um, to win an SEC tournament championship. So um, we'll talk about it, but I know they will draw strength from it and they'll, they'll get closer. All right. Thank you, Coach. Congratulations. That one, that was a pretty, that was a pretty catchy tweet that you put out. Which one? The leading three-point <laughs> shooter. <laughs> <laughs>